Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we will be discussing the conditions which affect the resting membrane potential. Okay, so we know that this is a cell having nucleus. Within the cell, the concentration of potassium is 140 millimoles per liter, whereas in the extracellular fluid, the concentration of potassium varies from 3.5 to 5.5 millimoles per liter. If this concentration is not regulated, this can cause, this can affect the resting membrane potential of excitatory cells, okay. Excitatory cells will be affected, okay. What all these excitatory cells are, they, it includes nerve fibers, nerve cells and all type of muscle cells will be affected, okay. We know that. The resting membrane potential of most excitatory cells of the body is equal to minus 90 millivolt. Okay. Whenever they, these cells are stimulated, certain type of cationic channels are opened. Okay. Some cationic channels are opened within these cells, which causes the influx of cations inside. Due to the influx of these cations, membrane potential becomes less negative okay becomes less negative if it reaches to the minus 65 then this potential is known as threshold potential okay so then this potential is known as threshold potential at this potential and special types of channels are opened these channels are known as voltage gated sodium channels okay so mostly these voltage gated sodium channels are opened these channels contain two types of gates at its outer portion they contain activation gate whereas at their inner portion they contain inactivation gates okay at the resting membrane potential they are Activation gates are closed, whereas their inactivation gates are opened. As soon as the cells are stimulated, cationic influx occur. This cationic influx takes this resting membrane potential, takes this membrane potential from minus 90 to minus 65. So threshold potential achieves. At this threshold potential, the inactivation, the activation gates of the sodium channels now starts opening. Whereas these inactivation gates starts closing during this period. During this period, what happens? Sodium comes inside the cell, which will always tend to bring the membrane potential to its equilibrium potential, which is equal to plus 61 millivolt. But it cannot, this potential cannot be achieved. Why? As soon as the potential reaches to zero plus 10 the inactivation gates of this sodium channels are now closed whereas activation gates are opened so there won't be any further influx of sodium okay these inactivation gates are only opened they can only be opened at the resting membrane potential otherwise they will be closed okay so this was the normal situation Whenever any stimulus comes, suddenly this potential reaches to the minus 65, which is threshold potential, and then it will then become 0 to plus 10. This was the normal situation. But if the concentration of potassium within the blood goes up, what will this high concentration of potassium within the blood does to the resting membrane potential? We know that the concentration of potassium outside the cell is less, whereas the concentration of potassium inside the cell is high. Because of the increased potassium, the relative concentration gradient, so because of the increased extracellular concentration of potassium, the concentration gradient will go down, due to which less potassium ions will move outside. Okay, So there will be the less movement of there will be the decreased movement of potassium outside the cell and which causes the membrane potential less negative okay 
so it will be around 67 okay minus 67 so this potential is nearer to the threshold potential we know that normally what was happening at the threshold potential the inactivation gates were up, uh, were closing whereas activation gates were opening but if membrane potential chronically remains at the at nearer the threshold potential these inactivation gates will be closed okay so they they will be closed so they are only opened when the resting membrane potential is achieved otherwise they want they won't be opened so due to the hyperkalemia due to the hyperkalemia it will now become difficult to excite the membrane okay how this hyperkalemia is arises arised how this hyperkalemia arises it arises it arises mainly because of increased tissue damage we, we say that cells are the bag of potassium embedded within the sea of sodium so because of the increased tissue damage because of the increased breakdown of cells the potassium from the cell comes into the extracellular fluid and which causes the increased concentration of potassium in the extracellular fluid so due to the increased potassium increased relative concentration of potassium in the extracellular fluid the concentration gradient goes down so the movement of potassium from from the cell to outside also goes down and membrane potential becomes less negative nearer to the and it becomes nearer to the threshold potential okay so at the threshold potential chronically these inactivation gates are of the sodium are closed so there won't be further influx of sodium so it will now become difficult to excite the membrane we have got another condition known as hypokalemia what will happen during hypo hypokalemia okay we know that this is a cell we know that there is the less concentration of potassium outside the cell there is high concentration inside the cell if we further decrease this extracellular concentration of potassium what will happen the concentration gradient the concentration gradient will go up there will be the increased movement of potassium outside the cell due to this increased movement of potassium outside the cell the negativity inside will become more it will become nearer to minus 95 millivolt now it will in this case it will become difficult to excite the membrane again so in both hypokalemia and hyperkalemia it is difficult to excite the membrane okay so the consequences of both conditions are same but mechanism behind is mechanism behind both of them are different so i hope it must be clear to you so the question must arises in your mind what are what are the effect of hyper and hyponatremia on the resting membrane potential so fortunately hyponatremia and hypernatremia does not have any impact on the resting membrane potential because at the resting conditions the per membrane's permeability to the sodium is approximately to the zero approximately equal to zero so no impact on resting membrane potential so there are no impact of hyponatremia hypernatremia on the resting membrane potential so we are done with the resting membrane